Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. This is Nona. I'm Andrew. And we've got beautiful toys on the table. So many and toys. This. Uh, this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Hellfire Armory, specializing in precision manufacturing. They are a leader in American made. Precision Manufacturing, right here in Wilmington. Actually, real close to where we live. Stop and, telling uh, people where we live, Andrew. Well, they already know. So, check them out. Link will be down in the description. It doesn't just have to be firearms. They can make you... They can make the bricks that you used, that you use to send your enemies to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> They can make. They can make a lot of things. Do you remember those? Uh, uh, did you watch Austin Powers? Yeah. Or the girls that had the. Um, the fembots. Yeah, they had the boob guns. Fembots. Yeah. I don't know that they can make you boob guns, but that work. But they can. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> they can. They can make something that looks like it. Whether or not they can make it work. That's between you and them. I do not want that for my birthday, by the way. Okay. Um, Please no. do not get me fembot boob things for my birthday. Okay. Thank you. I wonder what that would feel like. The Stop. No, I don't want it. No, the recoil. Because the, you would have to fire both at the same time. Otherwise, you'd be like... <laughs> I think that's Depending. what they. I think that's what they did. They did were they? like, but they. So from my memory as a child, as I a thought child. they were doing it, like, to be like erotic, like they were shaking themselves. I don't remember it being from the recoil. Obviously, he uh, pleasured himself after no. watching. No, at what year did that come out? Old. What year did that come out? Was that the first one? Mm, I don't know, 99, 2000? What year did Austin Powers' movie with the Fembots come out? 2002, maybe? The Austin Powers movie with the Fembots came out in 1997. It's called Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. 97. Was that the first movie in the series? I think so. Yep, that's right. Austin Powers. International Man of Mystery is the first movie in this. Okay, well, I didn't see it in 97. I didn't see it until like 2001 or 2002. I went to the theater, and at the time, my mall had like a, the dollar theater was in the mall next to the food court, Mm -hmm. and I went with my grandma. I remember this. Oh, my God, your grandma took you? Holy fuck. That's funny. Yeah. I just That's remember funny. I remember parking by the food court mm-hmm. and going in and that that same space. It wasn't even rated R, was it? It was rated like PG-13, I think. There was just a lot uh, no, of no. innuendos yeah. and suggestions, but not That same space, that same like retail space mm-hmm. became like a they had like um like indoor fair ride kind of things. Oh my God. In 97, you were 10 years old. It was like the, yeah, it was like the, they had like the spinny, like gyro thing that you like get into and strap in. That's crazy. Yeah. We definitely don't have anything like that here. And then. And we don't have a movie theater inside of Vermont either. That became where like Abercrombie and Hollister and all that stuff was. Mm -hmm. And then the last time I ever walked in that mall in that food court, it was there was like a, the, like the corner or whatever where it used to be, I think it was Hollister was on the corner. Mm-hmm. It was bounce houses indoors. So that space has been used for a lot of weird things. That's crazy. Yeah. Literally the bounce houses that you rent to put in your mm-hmm. lawn for your kids, they had those just blown, inflated inside. Pay like a dollar for 10 minutes of jumping. I believe it was more expensive than that, but. <laughs> I'm just. Imagine how much retail space like that costs. Mm-hmm. So it's the 
ticket to get your kid in there is probably stupid. We have a place here called Bounce. But it's a dedicated it's a place. Standalone, yeah. I'm talking about mall. Yeah, I know. We don't, during, don't have anything like during that. During peak mall mm-hmm. goers. I don't know what. It's for the it's for the dads to go do something with the kids while the mom gets the, all the shopping done. Mm, maybe mm-hmm. I wouldn't even go. I know you wouldn't. Or just stay home or go do something. He else. literally does nothing. Like staying at home oh. is his joy. If you haven't seen, they do uh, AR fifteen, AR nine, AR forty five, AR ten, and AR fifteen single shot. Lowers, some uppers. I don't remember which ones. You can get 80% or 100%. 100% has to be FFL transferred. So if you live in a state where it can be sold and shipped to you, um, you will need to provide them with the information for your dealer. There's a drop-down box during the checkout process. You cannot check out without doing it. If you have anything in your cart that is a 100% part, is a requirement. And if somehow you slip through, they're still not going to ship it to you. It's not going to come to your door. It has to go to the FFL. So, um, yeah, lots of cool stuff. They also, they literally make it. I said this on Monday's episode that they are making panels for elevators out of this same, That's crazy. The same, uh, bronze aluminum, I think is what I said it was, right? And is it an elevator here locally or one that they're shipping? Um, the company's called the Elevator Guys. So I don't know. Maybe they're doing a lot. Let's look up the Elevator Guys. Do you know anything about the company, the Elevator Guys? Are you talking about the Elevator Boys? That group of guys who have a bunch of videos online? Or no. Or do you mean a different company? A company that manufactures okay. elevators. Of a specific elevator company. Yes. Some of the biggest elevator manufacturers are Otis, Schindler, Kone, and Lysifra. They all have a long history. Okay, it's not the elevator. Oops. Schindler. I saw somebody recently, or maybe it was an old video, and I just happened to rewatch it. Um, it was like Schindler's List Part 2, and it was... Uh, <laughs> Schindler's pissed. I don't know what it was from. The elevator guy. Um, they are their Google business profile is not complete, so I don't know where they are. But there's Elevator Boys Instagram with three quarters of a million followers. That's who she was talking about. Mm-hmm. And then there's also a YouTube channel called Elevator Boys with two point four million followers. So yeah, there's a lot of, let's see your website, where are you at? People, there's a place on your Google business profile where you can put your social media profiles. Your website is not Facebook. Stop, stop the madness. I hate when people do that. I don't wanna visit your Facebook page. Not rated yet, but it has two reviews. Um, In all caps, elevator sales and service, installation and service of elevators, cargo lifts, boat lifts, wheelchair lifts, platform lifts, stair lifts, dumb waiters, and other mobility equipment. Not very good at punctuation. Let's see. Is it local? Uh, They're They're too dumb to add that to their profile. um, This looks local. There's... Uh, beach houses on stilts and stuff, but that looks pretty cool. I mean, it's like a little, like a single person wheelchair. You guys might not be able to see this, but this is on their Facebook page. Mm. It's like a single person enclosed elevator thing. Mm. The, so Jerry rig, everything YouTube channel. Um, he bought these big, uh, culvert pipes, two of them welded them together and buried it in his backyard. So he's got like a 12 foot diameter, Bunker by like, I don't know, 24 feet long or something like that. Okay. Literally buried in his backyard in Salt Lake City. Okay. <clears throat> his wife is wheelchair bound. Oh. So they built this big access section 
and they took apart one of those scissor lifts. So they like disassembled it. So it's not on wheels or anything like that anymore. And they like welded it down at the bottom and they set it at just the right height and they like buried everything. I don't, I don't remember how I figured this out, but it lifts up exactly to the top of the entrance and then lowers down to the level of the platform on the inside of the bunker. So they literally took a scissor lift, disassembled it, turned it into an elevator. It's pretty cool looking too. And they made, so the access hatch for that, that portion is this big, like it's like a retractable drawer that they built and fabricated. And then on top of it, they mounted solar panels. So it's just got these handles and you just go out there and just slide this thing over and push a button and the elevator comes up to pick you up and then slowly takes you back down. So anyways, today, today's episode is about football, yeah. not scissor lifts and not we're talking elevators. About, we're talking about manufacturing but and stuff like that. But we're going to talk about football okay. because this weekend kicks off Football season for Andrew. And Real we all football. know where Andrew will be every single Saturday mm -hmm. on the couch. Dun, dun, dun. Real football. Take it away, is Andrew. On Saturdays. So, the day this is coming out, I believe, uh, Connor Stallion's episode of Untold is coming out. I believe so, right? Did I tell you that? When does Untold Connor Stallion's release. Untold. Connor Stallions will be released on Netflix on August 27th. Is the 27th Wednesday or Thursday? August 27th is a Tuesday. Mark your calendar. Uh, so it already came out. Okay. But he has not watched it yet, obviously, because we're filming this a whole week in advance. Yeah. But... But he plans to, even though he hates Netflix, but he plans to watch it because it's about Michigan. Mm. Well, from what I saw, there's going to be a lot of people from Ohio that are going to be mad. Mm. Their thing has been, just wait for it. The hammer's going to drop. Mm. The hammer's going to drop. The hammer's coming. It's coming. It's going to drop, guys. Guys, Michigan's in so much trouble. Guys. The hammer. So what are they hoping is going to happen? That somehow like the championship is going to be handed over to them or something? Like some magical... No, um, it, things like that can be vacated, but like they just say nobody wins. Mm -hmm. They don't give it to a uh, runner-up. It just... Or was they put, Ohio even a runner-up? I thought no, Georgia was. No, it was Washington. Or, what? Yeah, Michigan played Washington. Oh. It was Washington and Texas in the semifinal. Oh, yeah, the Froggies. And then Texas. Yeah. Longhorns. Long, which one's the, the... TCU, Texas Christian. That's the one that I'm thinking of. Or the Horn Frogs. <laughs> yes, the Froggies. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was Michigan versus Alabama, one and four. Mm -hmm. Washington and Texas, two and three. Yeah, so Ohio is so far down that it doesn't even matter. And Michigan plays... Washington is a regular season game this year because they're in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. And they play Texas in two weeks. So Michigan's playing right out the gate. Who are they two playing? Two of the other runner-ups. Who are they playing this weekend? Fresno State. That's the one that you wanted to go see? For whatever reason, they made it a night game. And that's... I want to experience the new stadium night game because they, the, they put in those new lights last year and I've only seen it on TV and like recorded video and stuff. He is trying to get us to go on a whim and I said if he can secure a dog sitter then we will go but we have three fucking dogs who need to be taken care of for likely three days yep that's and, a big ask and Michigan's gonna mop the floor with them oh I'm sure except you said they always do terrible at night they, that used to be the thing and I don't know what's happened in the last three years. They're not anymore. They won their first ever night game at Michigan Stadium in 2012 against Notre Dame. Okay. And then they just underperform in every night game since then until the last three years. Magically, when I step foot into your life. Sure. 
I mean, that's what you said. You said that I was your good luck charm, yeah. that they started winning yeah. after I came into your life, yeah. but I'm not allowed to watch it with them because then I'll be bad luck. No, mm-hmm. I, but I genuinely don't. So Michigan is a very traditional team in general. Okay. What so do you, you mean? Have, you have teams that frequently change their uniforms and their uniform styles where they'll make like little tweaks and different things like that. They'll change their helmet for different games. Okay. Michigan always wears the same helmet, never changes ever. Okay. Michigan only has a couple color combinations and the most radical one recently has been the all blue. Okay. Traditionally, they always wore the maize pants and the what pants maize, the maize and blue. Uh, the colors. Really? That's what you're calling it? Yes. Okay. So they wore the maize pants. Somebody drank the Kool-Aid. No, it's that's the official color. It's yellow. It's maize. It's yellow. It's maize. It's yellow. It's maize. Okay, corn yellow, whatever. Is that better? Sure. So, okay. traditionally, they always wore the maize pants, mm-hmm. white jerseys home, okay. blue jerseys, jerseys away. Okay. But? Then they started doing, like, for special games, mm-hmm. they started wearing either white pants or blue pants. Okay. And then they went to, for one game, I don't remember what it was, they did all yellow and nobody liked it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like an eyeball fest. So now they, now when they wear all blue, mm-hmm. they call it the big game blues. Okay. they only wear it for like big games. So they, that's what they wore um, against Alabama. Mm-hmm. And that's, I believe, what did they wear it? No, they didn't wear it against Penn State. I can't remember what they wore against Ohio State now. But anyways, they're very, very, very traditional. They don't make any other changes. They brought back a throwback jersey in 2014 for the Notre Dame game, which had stripes on the shoulder pads. Ew. Yeah, and nobody liked it. And so they just terrible. Whereas you have Oregon, who wears a different Uniform for every game. Right, but you said that like Nike. Yeah, Phil Knight is an alumni of Oregon. Mm -hmm. And he's one of their. He gives all of the uniforms. Well, he doesn't give them. They have whatever normal deal any other school would have. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're the uh, like prototype test bed for Nike essentially. Gotcha. Okay. And that's, that's one of the ways that they get recruits. Come play for us and we'll give you cool jerseys. But purists like Michigan and Alabama who always wear the same uniforms. Mm. Have you ever noticed how plain Alabama's helmets are? Mm -mm. I can honestly say that I have never noticed. They're just plain red with the player's number on the side. Okay. Then Michigan has the winged helmet that they've always had. That people try and replicate, but everyone knows. No, the only thing I've noticed about Michigan is are all the stickers. That's been a thing. That's a tradition in football that has come and gone several times. It came back under Harbaugh in Michigan. It used to be a thing under Bo Schembechler, and I think, I think maybe uh, Lloyd Carr did it and then stopped, or maybe he continued, or maybe he might have done it all the way through. I don't care, remember, but. Definitely didn't happen under Retro, and it definitely didn't happen under, um, can't think of his name now. Anyways. Anyways. But that's, that's a, that's a normal thing. Helmet stickers are a normal thing for, especially high school, middle school. I had no idea. Yeah. No idea. You make a big play, get a sticker. Pancake somebody, get a sticker. Are you going to get stickers for Cashy? He's not going to wear a helmet. He can put them on his like arm or something. He has to understand what they mean. I can't be the one giving it out because it's a, it's a 
It's an individual award and sometimes a team award. Ah. Uh. So, like, you did something good that helped your team. Like, you did, you threw a crazy block for the running back. Well, you took him to his first flag football practice yeah. on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So, and you said that he did awesome. Yeah. He was, he was really nonchalant about his first tackle, if that's what you want to call it with flag football. He was, the, the kid was like running and Cash was just like, <laughs> just looked at him like, nope. Didn't even I have, love that. Didn't even have to try. I wish I'd recorded it because, I mean, I'm not even joking. He was just kind of looking at the kid. The kid's coming. He's like. <laughs> I'm going to take this from you. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Which. Uh, I don't know. So in leagues like that, they might they might have rules where you can't advance the ball if there's a turnover. I believe that's how it was for even Cooper's league when he played county, whatever, rec league. I don't know any football um, rules and regulations. So if you told me that they were supposed to pick their nose on the half field, whatever, something, I would probably believe you. The because NFL, I don't know. The NFL just like shot themselves in the foot with another rule change. What happened now? They made it so that it's a you would be penalized if you had an onside kick. So an onside kick is a special play. Okay. There are rules, like there's a lot of rules that go along with it. Okay. On like any, what? On any kickoff, the kickoff has to travel at least 10 yards before the kicking team can touch the ball. Okay. So let's say I kick the ball and like, I don't know, wind or whatever, and I fuck it up and it just kind of skips on the ground. Okay. And one of my teammates touches it. Where my teammate touches the ball is where, where it stops. the opponent's team takes control of the ball, which kickoff happens from your own 35-yard line, okay. meaning they've already basically made it to your side of the field if you only kick it three, four, five yards. Okay. So taking, kicking an onside kick requires one of two things, or I guess three things. A kicker that's good enough to do it Mm -hmm. and pull it off, especially if you're trying to do it. Are there kickers in flag football? No. What do they even do other than just steal each other's little tingles? Pass and run. (laughs) Okay. Pass and run. That's all it is. So a lot, most of the time, Unless it's obvious, like this has to be an onside kick because they're down by two touchdowns. There's only five minutes left and they need to score as many points. Like there are times when it's obvious to coaches, to viewers, like they have to do it because if they don't do it, they're absolutely going to lose the game. Mm. So they need to start taking risks. And now the NFL has said no more fun. That's why they call it the no fun league. Oh, well, he doesn't watch the NFL anyway, so I don't even yeah. know why he's talking about it. Just because they keep, they're like, oh, it's for player safety, it's for this and it's for that. So that's why they introduced the uh, fair catch on the kickoff. That never used to be a thing. You used to actually have to return every kickoff, meaning the ball gets kicked, the return man, assuming all goes well, catches the ball, and he has to run as far as he can, hopefully all the way to the other end zone and scores, but most of the time not, unless you're Devin Hester. And you're tackled, and where you're tackle, tackled is where your team starts with the ball. So if you only make it to the seven-yard line, now your team has to drive 93 yards down the field. Now they have fair catch rule, which they do in punting as well, but in punting you actually have to catch it on the fair catch. Like if I, if I signal for a fair catch on a punt return and the ball goes past me, it still goes past me. It doesn't come to where I'm standing. Whereas if a fair catch is called and the player is in the end zone in the NFL and even in, I believe in college now as well, um, it comes out to the 25 or 30 yard line, depending on which league you're talking about. So you don't even have to run the ball out anymore. It's just a, I literally didn't process a single word that you just said at all. It's a going through the motions movement the same way as, um, like when there's like seven, I don't know, 17 seconds left on the clock and the team with the ball that's leading doesn't take a knee 
it's penalized, or whatever. They have like time, there's runoffs, there's all kinds. Of, anyways, lots of variables. Biggest thing to consider here, though, is that the NFL is taking away a lot of all the, the things. Fun. Yeah, the, that makes the sport like fun to watch. Okay. And then you have, and I remember talking about this in an episode a while back um, about the XFL back in the day, mm-hmm. how they handled um, what, like the coin toss. Instead of doing a coin toss, you take your two fastest players on opposite sides of the field, put the ball smacked out of the middle of the field. And they have to run at it. They run at each other. I remember you telling me And they, they me try that. and jump on the ball. So you have lots of head and neck injuries because you have your fastest guys coming head to head. I do remember that. Yeah. The NFL used to be a fun and violent sport to watch. And now it's not. Yeah. I've started watching. When was the last time you watched an NFL game? Uh, Would you go to a Panthers game since it's just a couple hours away? Um, and we're friends with a couple who go all the time and are big Panthers fans. So it would be fun to hang out with them. Just a thought. I don't really like it. So NFL stadiums are dumb. They're smaller than most college football stadiums. That's all. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. College football is just. So the NFL, the players have already made it, right? They have no incentive to risk injury or, and I'm not saying that you should go and intentionally get hurt, Mm. but they have nothing to play for other than a potential next contract. But the majority of them, when they sign their contract, so you'll hear a headline like X player sign a $100 million contract, and then there's a byline to it, Y amount guaranteed. So maybe they sign a $100 million contract over four years, 60 million million of its guaranteed money, and if they get injured or something like that, there's things that are written into some of those contracts where if that happens, there's different things or whatever. But generally speaking, if a team wanted to kick you off the roster, they either have to buy out your contract or whoever they trade you to has to buy out your contract. Mm. Whereas in college, you're fighting for your life. You're playing to get out as high a draft position as you possibly can. You're fighting to get onto an NFL roster. The fans are much more into it. The turn so once you once you become a pro or you I guess technically college athletes are kind of pros now once you get to the NFL you you like build a team around like a a core group usually it's your offense sometimes it's your defense okay. but it'll be like okay we have a star quarterback now we have to build a team around what works for this quarterback okay Whereas in college, they have to recruit players and the turnover rate is every one to three years. So you never have the same faces. It's always like, oh, that guy, like, is he, is he going to be good? And then you see the first game, you're like, okay, I think he's good. And like he's playing as a freshman. You're like, well, he was good enough to beat off the seniors, but maybe they should have played a senior because they're more mature. Like it's, there's so much more. There's so much more to it. You are so into it. So into it. Because it's it's fun. It consumes his life, guys. Michigan is his life. If we want if, if he could marry Michigan, no. that would have been his first. If if we went to a Mich- if we went to a Michigan game and then mm-hmm. we went to a Panthers game, you would immediately understand the difference. Okay. The people at the at the How Pan- do the young people say? Bet. The people at the Panthers games aren't even there necessarily to watch the game. They're there to get drunk and party. And at Michigan. You don't think they do that at Michigan either? This is the first year Michigan's ever selling alcohol. It wasn't a thing in college stadiums until the last couple of years. So next Saturday will be the first time you can ever buy beer inside of Michigan Stadium. Okay. Whatever you say, Andrew. It's, it's true. 
That's what tailgating is. No. Literally, everybody no. knows that football. Is Tail, a- tailgating is what is that all about? Tailgating is not the same thing as partying in the game. I'm saying people that go to the NFL games, they wear their like goofy gear and stuff like that. Goofy gear. Haven't you seen some of these people? Yeah. You made me do a, they get all dressed a, up a like, hot or not for get, politicians. Now you need to make me do a hot or not for they get all goofy dressed, gear. They get all dressed up as like furries and everything like that. Ew, what? Yeah. Like versions of their mascots. Like there, there are super fans who they're, they are basically the mascot of their team at this point. The super fan? There are people... Uh, Oakland Raiders, uh, or not Oakland. They're not in Oakland anymore. Were they at Vegas? The Las Vegas Raiders? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. The NFL. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. The NFL team. Um, they, they have like these guys that wear, they look like they came straight out of like a, uh, uh, kiss concert. Okay. Like the face paint, but it's all like an eighties or nineties interpretation of well, like now I need to know oh what the gosh. Oakland Raider they're mascot not, they're not is. A, they don't they don't have a mascot. That's my point. I'm so confused. They're Las Vegas now. Las Vegas Raiders fans. Images. Would you ever face See, paint yourself? Like this. There's like guys that have like spikes on their shoulder pads, and so are they like supposed to be like the undead? No, it's just like it's war paint. I don't get it. I don't get it, guys. There's nothing to get. I mean, they're not using war paint for its intended purpose, which is to make sure that your face doesn't reflect light. <laughs> okay. Okay. Did you know that? No. Did you know that that's why football players wear the, the stickers the and or yeah. right here? Yeah. That's to keep. I, d- I did actually know that. That's to keep light from reflecting off your cheekbone into your eye. Yes, I did actually know that. I knew one thing, guys. One thing. They don't all necessarily do it for that reason. They do it because they think it looks cool. Mm-hmm. But that was the intended purpose when it was created. We need to buy new stickers, by the way, for Cashy. Okay. I think we're out from last season. Okay. So, yeah, they got that. You got all the people at Green Bay that wear their cheese head hats. You don't know what I'm talking about? I do. Oh, and I'm say. like, so dumb. Yeah. So dumb. Whereas at college games... People just wear their normal clothes. And some people, like the student section is where You don't think they're decked out in gear also? Not usually. Yeah, a thousand percent. I've been to the games. I've watched it. A Michigan game is... I do not believe that you are correct in stating that NFL games, they wear gear, and college games, they do not wear gear. They don't. I. So a lot of, so you have like uh, Michigan, uh, Penn State has what they call their white out where everybody wears white or they give you something white at the gate, white towels, white pom poms. Michigan has like maze out. And now they're for the Texas game. They're doing a uh, uh, stripe pattern. So every where you have like the stairs. So if you're in if you're in this column, everybody will get a Which blue. Which week is the Texas game? The seventh or sixth or whatever. It's the set the following Saturday. So two the se- the second game. Yeah, tickets are crazy. It's two playoff teams two weeks into the season. Michigan's the national champion. Texas got beat by Washington and Michigan curb stomped Washington. So, and hmm. Texas fans think that Texas is going to be Michigan after what just happened seven months ago. 
Because it's a different coach or just because they're cocky? Um, Texas actually is the only team from the four playoff teams that still has their coach. Harbaugh left. Yeah. I was saying Texas saying that to Michigan because it's a different coach. I'm asking you a question. So Texas fans are the same as Cowboys fans. Oh, so they're just diehard, diehard? No, they're just delusional. Okay, that's what I meant by diehard, diehard. No, a diehard fan is like me. A delusional fan thinks the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl every year. <laughs> that's serious. They, they Every year, it's our year. It's our year. And I think the last time the Cowboys won was like 93. Really? Yeah. Wow. Maybe even earlier than that. They, they're, I don't know. I don't know anything about any of the NFL rosters right now, but it's the same story all the time. And those same fans are Texas fans and they're the same way and the same people. Gotcha. Okay. Texas, Texas, Texas. And you want to move to Texas. I grew up living next to Notre Dame. I've dealt with insufferable people. I'll be okay. Notre Dame is the worst. If you guys live in Texas, please tell Andrew all the negatives because that's where he wants to move to. The people the people that... He wants to take me away from the beach. Notre Dame fans, there's beaches in Texas. Ew, I don't want to go to those beaches. There's people... Like Notre Dame fans, right? Mm-hmm. Are the most insufferable people on the face of the fucking planet. Rick, he's talking to you. Yeah. Whatever. I, Rick is fucking nice. Okay. I don't consider Rick a real Notre Dame fan. Why? Because he's only a Notre Dame fan for the reason that he said, because they couldn't get anything else at his house when he was growing up, which was what Notre Dame banked on back in the day when games were hyper regional. Now anybody can watch any game anywhere unless you're an NFL fan. Then you have to buy like a $1,200 yeah. Ew, what? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they have... Like, At that point, go to the game. They have intentional blackout. Ew, no. It's like if, if Chicago and Carolina were playing in Charlotte, there's reason to believe that you couldn't watch Chicago play in Chicago. Unless... You have the NFL Sunday ticket or whatever it is. That's crazy. And That's it's like it's like crazy. twelve or fourteen hundred dollars. That is disgusting. If you pay for the season. That's disgusting. If you pay monthly, it's like a hundred and forty or Ew. hundred and eighty or something like that. Yeah. On top of your already exorbitant cable package. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Absolutely not. Mm-mm. No. See. But if you're a fan, so if you're a fan of like, um, I don't know, Bowling Green, you're probably not going to be Where is that? Kentucky. That's okay. where the Corvette factory is and museum. We can go to Kentucky then. I'm, I'm making a point. If you're a fan or alumni of Bowling Green and you're in LA, you're probably not going to be able to watch Bowling Green unless they're playing. Notre Dame, Michigan, Texas, USC, a big team. Mm. Because then it's going to be nationally televised. But with today's technology, you can just spoof your location or use a VPN service. So the way the way that I did it for a long time, when YouTube TV first came out, it was only available in five cities. So my friend who's in Chicago, mm-hmm. I put her on my family plan. Mm-hmm. And on my computer, you can set um, on in Chrome, you can do this in other browsers too, but in the dev tools in Chrome, because there's things like sensors and stuff that you can test and see how your site and app and things like that will interact. You can literally put in GPS coordinates for where you want it to think you are, refresh the screen, and then instead of it saying, this service isn't available where you are, it says, oh, thanks for checking in. Here's what's, and so for the longest time, Living in Leland, I was watching Chicago news. If I had the TV on like the, a game and cause they're always on like CBS, NBC, right, ABC, right. whatever. So like a game would end and then like the news would come on and be Chicago news. And they're talking about 
tornadoes and or blizzards. And I'm like, wait, oh yeah, Chicago, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, and that's I mean that's still possible. One uh, when they figured out that people were doing that, they tried to change it so that in order to set, so you had a home location Mm -hmm. and then a travel location. Mm -hmm. And after a period of time, it would expire. And so you would just have to go back in and do it every like three months or so. Gotcha. And then they tried to change it to where you had to do it on a mobile device. Well, you can spoof mobile devices on laptops, but if you have an Android device, we have apps called Mock Location is one of them, where it literally tricks the metadata sensors in your device because it's it's for testing purposes for testing and development right so it tells the app andrew's walking down lakeshore drive in chicago at 1.2 miles an hour and it, crazy. it'll it'll show a route and if you if you open google maps you can see your little dot moving as if you're actually there that's crazy yeah. and so i would say i'm in chicago doing this go to youtube tv sign in real quick clear the thing, go back, turn off mock locations. Still have the app on my phone to this day and I haven't used it since then. Actually, no, I used it one time to mess with you and you texted me. That's it right there. You text me and you're like, where are you going? Because I, I had it set so like it looked like I was following you out of the neighborhood and you texted me and asked me where I was going. I was like, nowhere, I'm at home. <laughs> you don't remember that? I did not text you and you got mad at me no, for you not didn't. no. No. You were like, I did this whole thing. Didn't you no. see? Yeah. No. I remember. No. No. And I was like, Yeah, I saw. No. Figured you were going somewhere. I did it multiple times, but no, you that specific time. When well, they change the search. Where are you going? I'm just typing that, searching in your conversation. I'm sure I've said that to you many times. <coughs> 14 enough, times. Yeah. <laughs> um, like anytime he walks out of the house without telling me where he's going, I have to text him, where are you going? Um, I'm trying to figure out the context of this. I think this is when I was in Raleigh or Durham, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, because I was asking if you could see my the speed on Google Maps when I was commuting back and forth to Durham all the time. Um, Anyways, back to football. Okay. What are your predictions? Oh, God. I'm not going to predict anything because if I say anything, he will blame me for the rest of his life. You have to give a prediction. No, I cannot. Who's going to win the national championship? Nope, I'm not. Not. My lips are sealed. No. Who's going to win the national championship? I'm not saying anything, because if I say anything, you will hold it against me for the rest of my life and the rest of your life. I'm not saying anything. So, actually, I just, there it is. Somebody made a prediction. Their Mm -hmm. their 12-team bracket, because it's 12-team playoff this year, is the first year for it. Okay. Um, They have... Ohio State is the number one overall seed with a bye week. Uh, Texas, the number two seed. The uh, Miami, the number three seed. Oklahoma State, the number four seed. Uh, and then they have Oregon playing Memphis. Georgia playing Penn State. Uh, Florida State playing Ole Miss. Alabama playing Notre Dame. So Memphis, who's never won anything ever, they think is going to make the playoff. They have Notre Dame, who hasn't won anything since 1986, the last time they made it in the playoff. So hold on. Michigan wasn't on the list at all? Yeah, no. Okay, According so to it was, this person. It was clearly an Ohio State fan. Yeah, because he has Ohio State winning the whole thing. Yeah, it was clearly an Ohio State fan. He, he's He has Georgia coming in. He sounds like a Dallas Cowboy He has fan. Georgia coming in as the eighth seed and Alabama coming in as the sixth seed. Alabama doesn't even have a coach. Really? He What's his name? Retired. And they haven't replaced Saban, him? Well, no, they have. I was about to say. But I'm saying, so when you... They're getting ready to start. They need a coach. So it, it's a little bit easier now with the transfer portal. But back in the day, it was really difficult for players to transfer anywhere for any reason okay. other than like injury. Okay. 
So if they if they um um oh my god, there's a term for it, yellow shirted, then they were eligible. They they would they would add an additional year of eligibility to their to their college career. Okay. So technically you only have four years of eligibility. But if you have an injury or if you only play a certain amount, I think it's three games, you get an added year of eligibility. Okay. Yeah, I think the exception to that is if you're a grad transfer, mm. which happens a lot. Really? Yeah. Well, it used to. I don't it, um what's his name? Uh that was married. He played for the Seahawks for Wisconsin. He was a grad transfer from NC State. Um, Russell Wilson. No idea who you're talking about. Russell Wilson went to NC State and grad transferred to Wisconsin. Okay. And then went to the NF. He's married to somebody famous that you know. That I know? Yeah. I mean, who's Russell Wilson married to? It's going to be like Simone Biles or something. Sierra. 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 Sierra who? That's her whole name. Oh. Is she a singer? Maybe. Or an actress. One of the two. No, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. So here's a great, that's, I mean, I don't think this is common now, like I said, because a lot of players are opting to go to the NFL earlier, assuming they have high enough draft stock. Meaning, did your voice just crack? No. Yeah. No. Draft stock. <gasps> stock. <laughs> Is that if a player knows during their junior year that they're probably going to go in the first round of the draft, they're going to go. But if they're going to be like a sixth round pick, they're going to stay to improve their gotcha. rookie contract. Typically, not always. Some players will see the writing on the wall and be like, "Well." all the good players are leaving because they're graduating. So I might as well go with their class too, because I might not have a good enough quarterback or I might not have, if I'm playing defense, I might not have enough, a good enough D line or, you know, I, I won't be able to stand out because my team won't be good. Gotcha. I'll be struggling because my team is struggling. So what's your prediction for Michigan this year, Andrew? Every time I look at the schedule, and see where the games are. Mm -hmm. So the only two, I think Oregon's at home too. The only two big games that Michigan has away are Washington and Ohio State. Texas is at home. Oregon's at home. I can't see Texas coming in the big house and doing anything. Texas wasn't even good last year. But now they're in the SEC. So now to, to be in the SEC and come to the big house and lose to a Big Ten team right out the gate, people are going to be talking about firing Steve Sarkeesian again, their coach, which will make me laugh. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So he's kind of one of those weirdos that I don't really, I don't really care for him. What do you mean by weirdo? I don't know. He's just – so you got like crying Ryan Day at Ohio State with his little what – what are those little bouncy things called that you get your kid when they're a baby? Little thing where like this. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ryan Day in Ohio State. He's probably out this year if, if Michigan beats Ohio State. Oh my God. <laughs> he did that in the so at, at the Michigan game this past November. Mm -hmm. He was like out they there. They were called jump jumps, by the way. He was out there trying to hype up the players. He was like being weird, like trying to like bounce himself off of them and stuff. And so there's a there's he probably a, just snorted Adderall or something. There's a there's a big difference to players who want some autonomy and like the professionalism. So like if you're getting somebody hyped up, right? Like there's ways to do it. There's, okay. there's things that you can say, things that you can do in the locker well, room. Like all the motivational speeches that you give before football. Sure. But I'm, what I'm getting at is so Harbaugh is what they consider a player's coach. Okay. He put, the majority of the decision making and the majority of play calling to, to the best of the team's ability on the players. If the players, you know, they send in a call from the sideline, the players like, no, 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 we saw this earlier and we think it's this to be like, all right, cool. And then they run their play. Okay. 
it leaves a lot of it up to the players. Like your development is on you. Mm -hmm. Your play calling is on you. Okay. And it's a more professional atmosphere because that also means that your loss is on you. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my bad play calling. It was your poor ability to make plays. You called what you thought and it didn't work. And then we lost because of it. So there's an ownership and respect Mm -hmm. and players like that, especially when they're being developed to go into the NFL Mm -hmm. because NFL and NBA coaches are glorified babysitters, managers, right? Babysitters. They're, they're business managers. Mm -hmm. There, there are a lot of things that they do that the players can't or won't do independently, like create plays and schemes and stuff like that. Right. I mean, they might to some extent, but the coach at that level is there to be the eyes and ears on the sideline. That's like, Hey, that guy over there was doing this or that guy they're running this play or whatever. Like they're more there to focus the players and help make small tweaks Okay. versus like in high school, middle school, whatever the coach is there to literally hold your hand, teach you everything Mm -hmm. and tell you everything. You're not, your football IQ, as they call it, is not high enough to be able to execute a game without a coach. Okay. In the NFL, they could probably run an entire game without any coaching staff being there. But then you have the too many cooks in the kitchen kind of thing. Okay. The egos, whatever. So they're there to be like one step above, right? Okay. So. So when you have a coach who's acting like a little baby back bitch. And then you have the other team that's like, yeah. Then you have the other team that's like, all right, guys, let's take the field business usual. We've been here before. And he's very like personal with them. Each player. Except he's gone now. Yeah. But Sharon Moore is literally the same person. Mm, Okay. Good to know. And Sharon Moore uh, won against the nobody team in the beginning of the season when he was serving the first suspension. And then he beat Penn State and Ohio State, both without Harbaugh being there, when he was serving the second suspension. So we know Sharon Moore can win. I mean... But it's going to be different players also. Some of those players have moved on, right? Yeah, but... The the continuity is there. That's why they didn't lose very many players. And in fact, the number one receiver in the country out of Texas committed to Michigan for next year. The number one recruited player in the entire country committed to Michigan to a new coach who hasn't coached over and who is Texas. This kid? Andrew Marsh is his name. I only remember that because his name's Andrew. Oh my God. Yep. All right, Andrew. Before we finish. What is your favorite football movie? Hmm. Probably. I actually need to rewatch Remember the Titans again because I don't. I don't really. I haven't watched it since I was a kid. But if I would say one that I could remember, it'd be the one that I just quoted. The Longest Yard. That's where Baby Back Bitch comes from. (laughs) Cheeseburger. (laughs) Cheeseburger Eddie doing his robot dance. But does that count as a football movie? Yeah. Yes. Technically. Yeah. Okay. Technically. Yeah. I don't know what else we would call it. The okay. entire movie is about football. It just happens to be prisoners versus yeah. guards. <laughs> okay. All right. The Longest Yard is his favorite football movie. I thought you were going to say Waterboy. I wish I wish the Big Ten still had divisions because it's so hard to it's so hard to predict who's gonna make the Big Ten championship game. Because now it'll be the true one and two. Which in, in previous years, because you had divisions, it had to be the division winner and it had to be the division winner. So you could have had three or four teams in one division that were all better than the other division. But because you had division winner and division winner, that's who played in the championship. So now it could end up being like it was 
about 12 plus years ago before the Big Ten had a championship where Michigan and Ohio State were one and two, played each other. If they had a Big Ten championship, they would have had to play each other again. And then potentially, if they had split the games, would have played again in the championship. But they also didn't have a playoff back then. So now you have okay. you have the potential for Michigan and Ohio State to play the final game of the season, then again in the Big Ten championship. Depending on how, if the game is a blowout, the Big Ten won't put the loser back in the game. If it's a close game by like three to ten points, and when I say ten points, I'm like one team was winning by three and then scored a touchdown with like three seconds left to pad the win. That's a different look than winning by 10 points outright. Um, They might put them both back in. But the Big Ten now has um, Michigan, obviously Oregon, Penn State. Michigan doesn't play Penn State this year. Uh, USC, who else could possibly make it? I don't think Washington's going to do anything this year. Not only did they lose their coach, most of their players transferred out. Mm. So I think I think the Big Ten... So a lot of coach turnover, it sounds like, this year. Yeah, like I said, all or three of the four playoff teams lost their coach. The only one that stayed was Steve Sarkeesian at Texas. Mm. But Michigan could change that for them this year. I want... I want Notre Dame to get fucking crushed by Texas A&M in week one. They're going to College Station, Texas, and playing Texas A&M at A&M. A&M's not even a good team, but neither is Notre Dame. Who do you hate more, Andrew? Ohio or Notre Dame? I would nuke Notre Dame off the map. I would keep Ohio State around to beat them more. Really? Why? I just hate everything about the pretentious pieces of shit in South Bend. I fucking hate everything about that city. I hate everyone who's a Notre Dame fan. Except for Rick. Yeah, except for Rick. The, the rest of them are just, they're, uh, they're Texas fans. They're Dallas fans. Yeah. This year's our year. This year's our year. This year's our year. No, it's not. I'm pretty sure Ohio State fans are saying the same thing. This year is the year that we're going to win against Michigan. We play at Ohio State. That's the only advantage that they have this year. They have a shit coach still. Mm. Who's going to cry and bitch and moan the entire way to the game again. Every time I see him, he looks like he did his just for men on the way there. He's an ugly bull rat. And then finished peeing on his wife. So that's the other thing that I want to talk about real quick about how Harbaugh team player or uh, players coach and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you watch any interview where they're trying to talk to Harbaugh, first thing he does is praise the players and he grabs one of the players and, and pulls them in to do the interview. Doesn't want to take any credit for it. These guys did really great, played hard, did this, did that. Hey, JJ, come here. Talk to, or they're already standing there with him. They're like, hey, do this. And then he runs off. <laughs> it's, it's He considers it their team. Mm-hmm. When you're a player, that's what, that's the kind of coach that you want. Right. You don't want a micromanager. You don't want the coach who thinks he knows more than you. Harbaugh played for Michigan. Harbaugh played in the NFL. So he knows the peak of both. All right. We're out of here. We're out of here. All right. Go blue. Say it. Go blue. No, say it like you mean it. Maze. <laughs> say it. Say go it. blue. There you go. Oh, my God. You, you have to practice it because when you're in the stadium, uh, when you're in the stadium, you're going to be expected to be very, very vocal. Okay. So in a year and a half from now, when we finally get to go. <laughs> or maybe next weekend. <laughs> if there's no, no, we'd have time to record before we left. If there aren't any episodes next week, 
<laughs> It'll be because we didn't record and we did go. Uh, but we could take everything with us. Oh, like fuck a, no. Fuck no. I would do it. Pop up, little pop up podcast. Maybe. We have to take it on a plane though because we're not driving. All right. Good. Bye. Night.